What's up guys, back with another educational video and this week we are talking about alcohol and your health. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. So this topic comes up because there was a new meta-analysis of cohort studies looking at alcohol consumption and the risk of mortality. In a lot of previous studies, they have noted what they called kind of a J-shaped curve with regards to alcohol consumption, where low to moderate drinkers have a lower risk of mortality than people who abstain. And then as you go from low moderate up to moderate and high, the risk of mortality goes up. And there's also some randomized control trials, which are much shorter. You know, some of these cohort studies are 10, 20, 30 years long, where they look at low, moderate, and high doses of alcohol and really only see at least short-term changes in health markers at kind of the higher doses of alcohol. This new study was attempting to correct for what they felt were shortcomings in some of the meta-analyses and cohort studies that they looked at. For example, abstainers from drinking often are people who used to drink either moderately or heavily and are now abstaining for health reasons. And the problem with that is now you have people who are abstainers who are zero alcohol intake, but they may have underlying health issues from years of drinking before that. One of the things they attempted to control for in this study was looking at, okay, not correcting for false abstainers versus, okay, let's just include people who have never drank. And they also looked at things like socioeconomic status, age of the participants, smoking status was a big one. And some of the takes on social media have been even at low or moderate doses of alcohol in this meta-analysis, they saw an increased risk of mortality. Now I looked through this study and they ran several different analyses. And in most of them, especially in the uncorrected meta-analysis where they're not correcting for the abstainer bias and whatnot, they did see a reduced risk of mortality with low, moderate levels of alcohol intake. And when I say low, moderate, I mean like anywhere from one drink per week up to like two drinks per day is kind of where the cutoff was. And when I say drinks, they're looking at ethanol intake from 25 to 40 grams is defined as kind of a low, moderate drinker. That equates, depending on the drink, to about two or three drinks a day maximum. In these meta-analyses where they're not controlling for, you know, false abstainers, where they're not controlling for smoking, uh, where they're not controlling for some age issues or the studies of, or of lower quality, they still see that reduction in risk of about anywhere from 10 to 15 percent in most of these cohort studies and most of these meta-analyses. So people who are low-moderate drinkers have about a 10 to 15 percent risk reduction in mortality compared to people who abstain. But when they correct for that, when they correct for people who aren't smokers, false abstainers, so instead of using just abstainers, people who are not drinking currently, when they use the control group as people who have never drank, and they correct for some of these other confounding variables, they don't really see much risk reduction. They see like a 5% in most of these things, and it's usually not statistically significant. But in most of these analysis, they didn't really see an increased risk at this low moderate intake. Non-smokers who were low moderate drinkers had a 16% increased risk compared to people who never drank alcohol in their life. Now what's interesting is in people who were smokers, there was actually a 7% decreased risk of mortality in people who drank low or moderate amounts of alcohol compared to people who never drank. Neither of those were statistically significant, so that's important to point out. They did two dose response curves where they looked at either increasing alcohol intake with the most rigorous high quality studies that are correcting for these confounding variables, and they did another one which was just kind of uncorrected. And for the uncorrected version, they saw the J-shaped curve that other studies have seen. But for the corrected version, they pretty much saw a flat response up until you got to like moderate and high levels of drinkers where you saw kind of a linear increase in risk. My take home would be kind of what I already thought about alcohol, which is I don't think it has any health benefits. I don't think it's health promoting. 
I don't think a low or moderate level of alcohol is good for you, but your body does have processes to eliminate alcohol out of your system. As long as you're not drinking so much that you're exceeding the rate at which your body can eliminate it, you're not getting exposed to a lot of these compounds. For example, what I tell people typically is if you're drinking enough to get drunk, then you're drinking enough to where ethanol is in your bloodstream and you're probably getting some of the negative health outcomes. I am not promoting alcohol consumption, but I am also a realist. Alcohol is a big part of our culture and it's a big part of how some people connect. I'm not making a judgment statement about that. Some people choose not to drink and that's totally fine. But could I envision a scenario where going out and having a couple of beers with your buddies or a glass of wine with your girlfriends or connecting socially with your partner over a few drinks that perhaps the mental health benefits of that connection could possibly outweigh any negative or neutral effects of, of a moderate amount of alcohol consumption? Yeah, I could see that. I can't make that argument because I don't have that data. But I think it's important to not put ethical judgments on this and not shame people for their choices. High levels of alcohol consumption above, you know, three drinks a day. And, you know, when you get up to like six drinks a day, I think at six drinks a day, you're looking at like a 50% increased risk of mortality from all causes. You shouldn't be doing that. If you're doing it in a low or moderate amount as defined by these guidelines, you know, one to three drinks-ish, then I'm not ready to say that it's going to be absolutely bad for you. We may get more data. I may change my mind on this. All that to say, if you enjoy drinking, there is probably an amount that you can drink that will still not have long-term negative health consequences. It's probably a very small amount, and I would say a lot of people probably exceed that. And once you get past that moderate amount, it is a linear increase in risk based on your exposure to alcohol. If you are somebody who struggles with drinking, I would say, like with any addiction or habit that's difficult to break, get help because there's nothing more important than your health. All right, guys, hope you liked the video and I'll catch you next week.